The teaser trailer for Alien Romulus is out and it has taken the internet by storm, receiving an almost unanimously positive reception and generating some serious concentric waves of hype. I cannot put into words how excited I am about this movie because I have a strong feeling that it will steer the spaceship that is the Alien franchise away from obscurity and into a new era of relevance and success within the sci-fi horror subgenre. I'm going to break down the trailer and official info, address the leaks that came out a few days ago and analyze the objective reasons why this movie could usher a new era for our beloved xenomorphs. The teaser begins with a spaceship approaching a circular-shaped station orbiting a disc-adorned planet. This is most likely the inception of the movie when, according to the official synopsis, a group of scavengers from a nearby world, and the emphasis is on the usage of world instead of colony, travels to an abandoned space station to steal equipment. Next, we are treated to some cool long shots of the ship's corridors, with some credits and background voices streaken with terror and anguish. The dialogue is hard to make out, but it is most certainly composed of bits and pieces from the protagonists, and it brilliantly suggests that there will be plenty of psychological terror in the film. The drawn-out shot of the corridor ends up to a cryogenic chamber, with a pod awash with blood. This indeed confirms that the setting is the ship and not the station, which has no need for cryogenic sleep, and it also hints at the possibility that part of the action will be on the ship, and that the xenomorphs will end up on the scavenger's home planet. This first part ends with a clear warning. Run, just before a horde of facehuggers smashes through a glass door in pursuit of a man. These few frames alone have caused excitement and led to speculation that facehuggers would be scary again, and I agree. The scene from Aliens, where Ripley and Newt are locked up in a room with two of these terrifying crawlers, is one of the most intense in sci-fi and horror cinema, so it's only fair that they are treated properly again. One thing I notice is that they look much faster and more agile than in previous movies, which somehow reminds me of the cinematic and narrative shift from slow zombies to fast ones. Next up are some brief sequences of people running, contrasted with this man standing still, possibly suggesting that he is an android. Uh, this shot is very freaky. We see a woman whom I believe is actress Eileen Wu undergoing a facehugger extraction. We should keep in mind that the characters in this movie have no knowledge of the xenomorph biology since they have never even heard of them before, so it's possible that the survivors take the character played by this actress back to the ship and put her in cryostasis in the cryopod we saw earlier. I think it's entirely possible that a chestbuster is responsible for that bloody mess and that a xeno develops on board, hence the people running through corridors. Or it could be speculated that said chestbuster will end up on the survivor's planet, setting up the events for a sequel. We see more brief shots, one with people floating in zero gravity, actress Isabella Merced crying, and a small vessel leaving the space station before an explosion, which I assume is the moment the survivors escape. Next is the shot where the facehugger attaches itself to Eileen Wu, and finally the fan service that made my heart jump, the protagonist played by Kailin Spaney, exiting what looks like a loader and, will you look at that, carrying the iconic M41A Pulse rifle from James Cameron's Aliens. Everything in the shot, from the woman's careful and hesitant demeanor to the aesthetic and lights of the background, down to the red light ammo counter on the rifle, is reminiscent of Ellen Ripley's descent into the Xeno Queen's lair. Make no mistake, this is both a homage and fan service. The director is letting us know that what fans have been clamoring for for decades, which is a return to the guns and action of aliens, will undoubtedly be present in the feature film. The last shot is another iconic moment and a close view of a fully formed alien using its retractable inner jaw.
Making a good trailer is an art in and of itself, and it works best when it entices the viewer's curiosity by spelling out the tone and general aesthetic of a movie, and at the same time providing a hint to the premise and events unfolding without giving away relevant plot points. From this perspective, Fede Alvarez succeeded in crafting 63 seconds of pure visual spectacle, tantalizing action and distressing horror, with essentially zero dialogue. I must say I am truly impressed with the visuals. If the rest of the movie is on par with the trailer, I believe we are in for a visual spectacle that unquestionably deserves to be savored in a movie theater. I know aesthetic is only a part of the equation when it comes to great movies, but at least we know for sure that the director has nailed this part. The ship and station interiors are incredible, highly detailed and futuristic. The lighting and color scheme very pleasing, with a prevalence of warm and bright but not blinding orange against darker tones. The digitally created exteriors very realistic, and the design and visual effects for the creatures outstanding. On the storytelling department, the teaser manages to generate rising tension and fear throughout, but leaves us on a high note, suggesting that there will be horror but heroism as well, with the protagonist rising up to the challenge of defeating this monsters. All of this without giving away, plot-wise, anything more than the brief official synopsis released a few months ago. One other aspect worthy of mention is that overall the trailer looks and feels stylistically fresh compared to how standardized and riddled with cliches most blockbuster trailers have been in the recent past. I'm obviously a bit biased due to my immense love for the alien lore and movies, but I see enough objective reasons to consider Alien Romulus teaser trailer a remarkable achievement and due to the general response an impressive success in building up interest for the film. I suggest you skip this section if you want to enjoy Alien Romulus to the fullest, but as a content creator in the horror genre, I am required to address the leaked information that's been circulating on the internet. There's also another reason, within that leaked info lie some of the reasons why I believe this movie will revive the franchise, which will be explored in the next section. All right. According to three posts published in close succession on the Alien vs. Predator Galaxy blog, in the film we will get to see uh, the protagonist's home planet, which sports an industrial grit visual style. Kaylee Spaney's character name is Rain, while Andy, played by David Johnson, is indeed an android and described as her synthetic brother. The society they come from doesn't take kindly to synths, which will probably play a big part in the dynamics between the two characters. This is interesting, but the juicy stuff comes with the description of the Romulus station, which is a huge research facility where Wayland yutani scientists were studying xenomorphs and artificially creating some new and more ferocious versions of the species. This, of course, up until an unspecified but not too hard to imagine disaster left the station deserted for several years. The real bombshell comes in the revelation that the facility's operations began after the infamous company retrieved the alien specimen that Ripley pushed into space after escaping the Nostromo. The creature somehow survived in space until it was recovered and later used to reverse engineer its DNA and extract the black goo that was central to the plot of Prometheus and Alien Covenant to use it as a form of miraculous cure. I don't consider these major spoilers because they don't say anything about the events unfolding in the film, just some info on the setup. On the other hand, the last spoiler is somewhat bigger. Apparently, the station was run by an android of the same model as Ash from the 1979 film. Not the same character, of course, but apparently AI augmented to have the same face and voice as the late Ian Holm, who sadly passed away in 2020. If this is true, I presume the actor's family must have given permission for the studio to use his features. Technicalities notwithstanding, if these rumors turn out to be true, Alien Romulus has significant ties to all the movies directed by Ridley Scott in the same franchise, and his role as a producer would only make more sense.
It's an essentially universal opinion that the Alien franchise's first two movies represent its pinnacle, and that every subsequent motion picture effort was disappointing. My personal opinion is that Alien 3 was a great sci-fi horror movie per se, but it was tainted by the heartbreaking decision to kill off Hicks and Newt at the onset, two characters we rooted for and grew attached to, at least yours truly did, and Bishop just a bit later. The entire production was damaged by the studio meddling with the artistic vision of David Fincher, who was a newcomer with no bargaining power at the time. Alien Resurrection was a far cry in terms of atmosphere and tone, albeit with some cool sequences and being entertaining overall. Alien vs Predator was fun, but is generally disliked and considered a cash grab, and watching Alien vs Predator 2 felt like being at the franchise's funeral. Expectations were high for Prometheus, and later on even higher for Covenant, but despite the great direction and nailing the cosmic horror and gore for the first two movies, at least that's how I feel about them, it is clear that Ridley Scott saw no artistic interest in giving fans what they wanted, but had lofty philosophical ambitions. Which is fine, mind you, a lot Prometheus, but I could never understand the choice of killing off Elizabeth Shaw in Covenant. Once again, a character I liked and related to unceremoniously and anticlimactically, oft for no understandable reason. That said, I still enjoyed Alien Covenant, but the xenomorph and the alterations of its biological cycle felt forced. I think the real problem with this franchise lies within the almost complete disregard by the studio and by the various productions of fans' expectations. I know this is a common issue in Hollywood's history, and I also know that there are examples that sometimes listening to fandom can lead to bad results, but the Alien franchise is, in my opinion, one of the most absurd examples of studio and executive stubbornness in the history of cinema. Why did they keep churning out one cinematic disappointment after the other, when what fans wanted was very simple. I cannot speak for all Alien fandom, of course, but I've frequented enough forums and read enough reviews to understand that all people wanted were characters we could root for for more than one movie, battling xenomorphs with guns, all peppered with psychological horror, a healthy dose of gore, shady corporations scheming against humanity's best interests, and gorgeous but cold and unforgiving landscapes and technology as backdrop. I know it may sound somewhat unintellectual, but that's what I fell in love with when I first saw Alien and Aliens, and no other film has been able to recapture that same horrorscape if you will, and it seems I am not alone in feeling this way. Enter Fede Alvarez. You don't need me to sing his praises, he is a very skilled and capable artist with vision and ambition. And I had high expectations already, but what truly sold me was something he said in a recent interview with Variety. That's really what Ridley and Cameron told me. The only way to make this movie is you have to be involved at every level. These are very handmade movies from their directors and that's why they're so unique. This is not a studio movie where you come in, do your thing and there's a machine going on that knows how to do them. And later on, in the Alien franchise there were places that the directors and Ridley were more interested in that necessarily wasn't related to the horror of it all. But for me Alien works at its best when it's scary and when it's action like Aliens. The horror and the shock of that world is personally what I like the most. In these two brief passages I see embedded the real reasons why Alien Romulus has great chances to be successful and to revive the franchise. Fede Alvarez came into the project knowing that to make a good movie he needed to have full creative control, with little to no interference from studio executives, and that it needed to be handmade or artisanal. He also understands, probably because he was a fan himself to begin with, what the audience really wants, which is a blend of the horror from the first film and the militaristic action of the second. He's not being blunt because of his close collaboration with Ridley Scott, but he is telling us that this is not Prometheus or Covenant, 
He understands and he wants to give us fans what we want and nothing encapsulates it better than these simple facts. He involved the VFX artist who worked on the second movie. He decided to chronologically set the story between Alien and Aliens and he's drawing heavily from both in terms of style and tone. Perhaps I'm reading too much into this, but I have the strong feeling that by choosing a space station as the main setting and by introducing new types of genetically engineered xenomorphs, he also chose to borrow elements from the other two successful and beloved media instances of the franchise, video games and comics, specifically the video game Alien Isolation and the Dark Horse comics miniseries from the late 80s and 90s. Going back to what I hinted at early on in the video, one specific element gives me an ulterior reason to be excited. It's a small detail, but I think it implies something bigger. The protagonist's home is referred to as a world, not a colony. What could that mean? I think this planet or moon they come from is some sort of politically independent entity that has chosen to sever ties with the Earth and with the all-powerful corporation that is Wayland yutani this small detail could be a storytelling mine for future sequels, and I believe Fede Alvarez already has a trilogy mapped out. One that involves the alien species wreaking havoc on Rain's home world and a war with Earth and Wayland Yutani. I would really love to hear your thoughts in the comments section, whether you agree with me or not. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day and see you in the next one.